My name is Wes Bunn, uh, Senior Training Content Creator. And in today's stream, we're going to be talking about some of the features that have gone into Sequencer uh, with the release of 4.12. So as you know, 4.12 came out last week. Uh, Mike Fricker was on not too long ago, highlighting some of the features that are going in as a whole uh, to 4.12. Talked a little bit about Sequencer and some of the uh, big ticket items that are coming in with Sequencer. But what we wanted to do in this stream was break it down even further and talk about some of the uh, uh, nuanced features that have gone in uh, that he didn't discuss uh, that we're going to cover today. So we have a ton of stuff to cover, a uh, short amount of time to do it. Uh, we're going to try to get to some Q&A at the end here, but uh, let's talk about what we're going to cover. First of all, uh, we're going to cover the sequence recorder, uh, which is now available in 4.12. Uh, if you were in the preview, uh, you probably had access to it. Uh, if you were not in the preview, this may be the first time that you've had the chance to work with it. Uh, there is currently a how-to, I'll, I'll show this a little bit later actually, there's a how-to that I wrote uh, getting started working with the uh, sequence recorder. Uh, so we'll walk through the basics of that as well as how to record for uh, a multiplayer scenario and some other tips and tricks you can use uh, for the sequence recorder. And then following that, we're going to talk about some of the cinematic, cinematic actors that have been added. And we've highlighted these before on previous uh, uh, sequencer streams. We're going to break it down and kind of use each one of those uh, in a quick example uh, just so you can see those in action. Uh, and then we're finally going to wrap up with some new workflow improvements. There's been a lot of shortcuts and things added to make creating your uh, cinematic content a lot easier. Uh, we're going to highlight some of those along the way, some of the shortcuts uh, along the way, as well as uh, I'll show you the pages that uh, we've been working on here uh, that should be published, hopefully by the end of this week, uh, the next round of sequencer uh, documentation. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to jump right into the editor here. So I have a project up. And what we're looking at here is the vehicle game project, just because it's a little bit more visually interesting than the template. So we're going to use this to cover some of the uh, things that we're going to do here today. So first up, sequence recorder. Uh, you can get to this by going to the window. By default, it won't be uh, accessible, but you can go to window and you can enable it right here, uh, sequence recorder. Click this, it'll pop it up. And I usually like to dock mine over here, just what's out of the way. Feel free to dock it wherever you'd like down. And like I mentioned, I was going to hop off screen and show you this real quick. So we currently have the how-to to record gameplay as a sequence. Uh, in 4.11, this got leaked a little bit early. It actually wasn't in 4.11. They pulled it at the last minute because they were making some tune, uh, tuning and tweaking it, uh, trying to get it ready for prime time. So this page is uh, currently up and will be updated uh, probably by the end of the week because we try to publish documentation on Wednesdays. Uh, so I've already updated all of this, and hopefully that will get published uh, this week. But this should still get you through step-by-step step, uh, the basics of, of sequencer. We're going to cover this here real quick. Okay. So uh, what we can do is we have the sequence recorder up. We can hop into a play session here. Hit shift F1, get out. And I can hop over the sequence recorder here, and I can add to do a new recording. I click this. And there's some properties here that you can set for the sequence recorder. Uh, you can set uh, whether or not it's going to create a level sequence, which is by default, which is what you want. You can set the length, uh, delay before it starts recording. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, the path, uh, name, etc. Uh, one of the interesting ones here is the uh, record nearby spawned actors, if you leave this checked, which it is by default. Uh, anything that is spawned in the world uh, while you're recording will also get captured. So if you have uh, a character that swings and has a particle effect come off or something like that, uh, this vehicle as it's driving will kick up some dust and will capture those as well. Uh, so this, this option here is really cool for uh, capturing those types of things. Uh, you can also increase the radius at which you uh, pick up those types of things here with this value. Uh, the record world settings actor is used, some, some games, like it says here on the tooltip, some games use this to attach world sound effect, it's on by default, so it'll, it will create one of these for us. Uh, it's up, optional up to you if you'd like to use it or not. Uh, the actor filter here, you can filter out what actors to record, what classes. Uh, and then there's the level sequence actors trigger. So if I, if I have a level sequence in the world here, I can tell that level sequence to play when I start recording so that I can do some uh, synchronized recording, essentially. Uh, default animation settings, you're not going to have to worry about these too much. We can take a look at these if you'd like. Uh, that's the gist of the sequence recording. If I click this option here, we're going to get a little bit more options. Uh, and these are the ones that are going to allow us to define uh, setting up the recording of our, our character or our pawn in this case uh, that we're going to be using, and it's this vehicle here. So what we can do, we can either uh, 
uh, click this drop down and we can search for VH, VH buggy, like so is the name of our pawn. Uh, there's also animation recording. You can uh, make some changes to this if you'd like as well. Set up see it. Uh, most of these you won't have to use too much, but you can experiment with those and uh, toggle those if you'd like. So we're set up to record now. Actually, we're targeting our vehicle buggy here. If I hit record, see in the preview here, it gives me a little countdown. And once it's done, I can start driving. Now, I'm not going to do a full lap here. I'm just going to drive to the end of this bridge, something like this. And once I get to the end here, I'll stop. So I can hit escape now, and it'll process that. And after a second, you'll see down here at the bottom, the recorded sequence has been successfully recorded. It's actually added it to the content browser under a cinematics folder in sequences. And it created two assets for us. We have an animation. Uh, everything that we've done is recorded in here. Uh, and then we have our level sequence. So I can double click and open this up. It'll open up sequencer. Let's dock this down here. And it's created a nice folder structure for us. You can see there's the buggy. If I fly back to our buggy here. And you can see the yellow right there is our path. That's our transform there. Now this is just a level sequence now. It'll drive everything that we've done. We can re rewind, fast forward. Everything that we've just done was recorded, but it's now a level sequence. So in essence, we can come in here and add audio to this if we wanted. We could add uh, cameras, camera cuts, et cetera. All that is done right here inside of Sequencer. We can build our cinematic around a gameplay capture. It's really easy to do that. So that's the basic form of uh, the sequence recorder there. Suppose you wanted to record two players. So you have maybe a fighting game and you have you know, one fighter versus another and you want to record both of those at the same time. Uh, you could take a very similar approach here. I'm going to close this out real quick. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back to the sequence recorder here. Delete these, start fresh. So I'm going to hop down here and pull some of these player starts. So I'm going to kill this player start and kill this one so that we have two right there. And let's change the number of players to two players here. Oops. Okay. We should have two vehicles here. It'll take just a second to load in, which we do. Hit Shift F1 and go off screen for a second. There's my second window. So, now very similar to what we just did a moment ago, we can come into the sequence recorder here. We're gonna add two tracks now. So we can select uh, the first one here, click this drop down, search for VH is the name of our pawn, VH buggy. And I can see we have two of them, so we can add this one. And then for the other track to record, we'll select the other one. It's very simple. Like so. So again, if you had a fighting game and you had two characters that you wanted to uh, record, you could do it this way. Now you could also use the uh, record nearby spawned actors. Uh, this will only work though, of course, if they are spawned after you start recording. So it won't work if you have something that's already in the level. Uh, it needs to be spawned in at runtime. So uh, we have both of those set. We could hit record. So it says three, two, one. And you can also see in the upper left up there, it says server. And I'm just going to drive to right there. Hit shift F1, go off screen. Bring up my window here. This one says client. And we'll just drive like that. It's good enough. Very interesting stuff, I know, but gets the point across here. You'll see in a second. So the sequence has been recorded. Uh, we left it the same naming convention. So I double click and open this one up now. You'll see that we have two buggies that are recorded. And they're both right there. Now we can kind of scrub through. And the other one will take off like so. So that's a way you can record multiplayer. Uh, ideally, I would have another controller, somebody playing the second person so that we can do it at the same time. Uh, you can see, like, if we wanted these two to race against each other instead of having one go and then the other one go. Uh, quick way to fix this, though, what we could do, actually. Let me just hop back to the beginning here. Uh, we could go over here. I'm going to close this real quick. We take this recorded sequence and duplicate it. And then suppose I created a new uh, level sequence, which we just call multiplayer chase or something. Oh. And let's open that up. And we can add what's called the subscenes track here. We can add this. And that'll allow us to specify level sequences to add. So we can add this one. And then we can add this one. So we have the original and the duplicate. We can move those down. Put they're on top of each other. I'm going to keep playback in section 
bounds, like so. So in essence, what we're going to do, if we open this one up, uh, we can take, let's see, vehicle buggy one, which is this one that's starting here, it looks like. So let's, take, let's take this one. Let's delete this one. Make sure that's the right one. Yeah. And then we can go up and go to this one. And then delete this one. Now what we can do is we have the same, essentially the same thing. One goes and then the other goes. But now we could split this and then align them so that they run at the same time. So it's just a work a workaround that you could use for this type of uh, recording. So somewhere right here, uh, a couple quick shortcuts right here. Uh, if we wanted to right click, we can go edit and we can say trim left, trim right, or split. Uh, one of the shortcuts you could use, if you hold control and hit comma, it's going to split and trim left. Uh, control and period is going to split and trim right, and control and slash is just going to split. So in this case, we're going to cut out the uh, left side here. So we're going to hold control and hit comma, split and trim left. Up on this one, control period, split and trim right. Now we could stack these two on top of each other. We could go up here if we wanted and just clean this up just a little bit. Say control period, split, go back to the beginning. Now they should both go at the same time. So they don't have a full uh, to the end of the bridge, but you get the idea here. This is how you could do a simultaneous uh, recording in this fashion. You could do it this way. There's another way that we'll show you as well. And the, these methods that we're showing now are kind of the advanced way of doing things. Uh, we'll try to get some more documentation on these up. Right now, all we have is the first way that we showed, recording a single actor. Uh, but what you could do is also record inside of Sequencer itself instead of using the sequence recorder. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'll close this out. I'm actually going to delete all these, just get these out of the way. Okay. And what we'll do here, we'll create a new uh, level sequence. We'll just call this the chase. Yep. And I can open this up. And inside of it, I can add a sub scenes track again. And we'll use uh, the first recorded sequence that we did. So our, our pawn that was going the full length of the bridge. I'm going to fly in here real quick and kill that player start. Move this off so that we spawn next to it. Yep. Now we'll spawn right there. So we have a sequence here. And what we're going to do now is actually play in the editor and have this sequence play with us so that we can uh, do it at the same time. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, if we play the editor here. Uh, you know what, let me hit escape real quick. Let's change this back to number of players one. And let's try that again. We play in the editor here, there's already a car there. That's our uh, level sequence. I can hold shift and F1. Typically we would come up here and go through the sequence recorder. Or we can come down here and inside of our sub scenes track, we can click this plus sign. We go all the way to the top, there's a couple options. There's record new sequence, which will record and add to the subtrack uh, from gameplay and simulation. I haven't used this one too much. I, mostly it's going to be this one down here, uh, record new sequence from the current player. And this will take the current player's pawn. Uh, so if I go ahead and select this, our pawn is this vehicle here. You can see our uh, toolbar here has been updated. We now have a record here. So if we hit record, what will happen is we'll get our countdown. And the car on the left will play out its sequence while we play out in real time ours. We can drive along it, and our ghost car is actually destroying us this time. So something like this. And we can hit escape. So it recorded that sequence on this track here. We're all the way at the end here. I'm going to hit control period, trim that up, go back to the beginning. And now, fly all the way back here. Should have both of these playing together. So that's another way that you can do sequence recording. If you want to do simultaneous uh, recording, synchronized recording, uh, record a sequence, put it in a sub scenes track, and then from the sub scenes track, start your recording so that it'll play back as you're recording. So those are some of the new features with uh, the sequence recorder. I know a couple questions are rolling in. We're going to try and get to those at the end. I want to make sure that we get through uh, everything uh, here before we get to those. Uh, we're going to move on to some of the cinematic actors uh, that have been added. Go ahead and go back to the beginning. Now that we have something to kind of play with here, 
have this little drag race essentially. Uh, let's talk about some of the cinematic actors. So if we go to the modes panel, we go to cinematic. Uh, we've highlighted these before after it's done auto saving. I'm going to turn that off. Get out of here. Uh, some of the cinematic actors uh, that we've talked about in the past are the camera rig, the camera rail, and the sin camera actor. So we can go over here, go to cinematic. There are those three cinematic actors that we can use. And we can take our camera crane in here. And as you, you would expect, the camera crane is just a crane, like you would see on a traditional movie set. Uh, it doesn't have a camera attached to it, but we could add one. We could take cinematic camera actor, drag it in, and we can get rid of sequence recorder now. Like that. Uh, we could take our cinematic camera, attach it by just dragging and dropping it on top, so it's now attached. Uh, we could take the camera and then zero out its transform. Zero this out. So, so it is now attached to our crane, and if we take our crane, see where's that at? There's the crane. On the crane itself, has some properties for the pitch, the yaw, and the arm length. So we could adjust this and move the pitch up. You can see the camera is now attached to it. You can see in our little view there that it's kind of going along with it. And we could adjust the yaw. So they're all pretty straightforward, and arm length as you would expect. So it functions like a, a traditional crane, and that's really that's all that's to the crane. Um, there are some keyframe buttons here that you can add uh, if you have Sequencer up, and we'll add the current value uh, as a new track for this crane inside of Sequencer. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Let me just zero these back out. So now that we have our crane and our camera, I'm going to select both of them. Over in Sequencer, I'm going to click Add, Add to Sequencer. Some of you guys have probably already done this in the past. Uh, we have the crane, we have the camera. In order for this uh, sequence to use our camera, though, we need to add a camera cut track. We can add a camera cut and then specify that camera as the camera to use for this particular sequence. So now it's set up. We're set it, ready to use this camera crane and camera. However, that was a lot of steps just to get the camera crane and the camera into sequencer and ready to use. I'm going to show you a shortcut. So I'm going to delete all of that. I'm going to delete the camera cuts, delete the rig, delete that, delete all of this. Don't need that either. So we're back where we started. What we can do if we take our camera rig crane here and we hold shift and drag it in. I'm going to hold shift now and drag it in. When I do this, it's going to uh, add the camera crane. It's also going to add the camera and attach it for us. It's also going to add it to sequencer. So it's already been added to Sequencer for us. It's added a camera cut track for us already, and it's assigned that camera for us. So it's done all of those steps in one step. So very, very handy uh, tool holding shift. There's one other thing that it did for us. Scroll down a little bit more, it says spawned. So we've created a spawnable. What that means, uh, if you've looked at the documentation, this only exists, uh, this particular asset only exists while our track is active. So I scrub off of it, you'll see it goes away. And now while I'm on it, it spawns in. If I were to play all the way to the end of the sequence and finish it, it would go away, go away as well. So we've created a spawnable by holding shift. You can think of it this way, shift, S, spawnable. Hold shift and drag it in, that will create a spawnable. The other way that you can do this, I'm going to delete all this again real quick. Uh, instead of holding shift, if you hold control and drag that in, so I'm going to hold control, drag this in now. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to add the camera, attach it for us, add them both to sequencer, add a camera cuts track, and specify that camera for use. However, now it's actually in the level. We've added it to the level at that point. Uh, so it's all, it all depends on what you need. If you need something to go away after the sequence is over, you could use a spawnable. Or if you need something to be used in multiple levels, you could use a spawnable, uh, because level sequences are not level specific uh, if you are using spawnables. So for now, I think we'll just leave it like this. We'll leave it in the level. I think that's OK. Uh, let's actually work with this. Oh, before I do that, actually, let's mention one more thing here. Uh, this pertains to anything in the modes panel or the content browser. Uh, so if I go to lights, for example, and I hold shift and drag in a point light, it will add it to sequencer as a spawnable. If I hold control and drag in a point light, it will add it to sequencer, but it will add it to the level as well and not just a spawnable. So you can do that from the content browser. You can do that from the modes panel. 
just another way of adding things quickly to sequencer. So uh, let me go ahead and delete these lights. We don't need those actually. Delete that and let's delete that. And delete this from the level as well. Let's make some quick adjustments to our camera crane here. And take our crane, and just kind of frame up a quick shot. This is gonna be very rough. Kind of line it up, something like this. Uh, right now, we're using the viewport of the camera, so the picture in picture. Uh, cinematic uh, previews have been added with 412. If, again, if you were inside of the, uh, the preview, the Unreal Engine uh, launcher previews, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you've worked with the preview version of Unreal Engine, you probably had access to the cinematic viewports, but if you're coming straight from 11 to 412, uh, you haven't probably haven't had a chance to work with them. You can enable them pretty easily, actually. If you go to any viewport, uh, first thing that we'll do is we'll create a layout change. So let's go to layout, change this to two panels, like so. And we'll change this to perspective. And over in this one, we can click this drop down. All the way down at the bottom, there's the viewport type. You can change this to a cinematic viewport there. So and we'll change it to a cinematic viewport. And there's shortcuts for that as well. Uh, Shift D for the default. Shift C for cinematic is cinematic, so it'll turn it into a cinematic camera. Uh, another shortcut, Control Shift T will hide this toolbar. So Control Shift T will get rid of that, turn it back on. Uh, and then finally, the G key, the game view, turn off uh, the editor icon so it'll give us a real true essence of what our camera will look like uh, if we lock our viewport to it. Now we have our cinematic viewport set up. Uh, let's make some quick changes to our camera crane here. Let's pull that back a little bit, frame it up, something like this. And actually, before we do that, let's make some quick changes to the camera itself. So camera actors, uh, if you have not worked, at, worked with the cinematic camera before, if we search for camera in the modes panel, there's two types of cameras. There's a regular camera actor, if we drag that in. Over in the details panel, we got some properties for the camera settings, projector, projection mode, field of view, etc. cetera. Uh, however, for the cinematic camera, there's more film style settings, such as the, the lens settings, film backs, et cetera. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna set this, uh, select this. Over in the details panel now, uh, we have the ability to look at and track something. Uh, so this is pretty easy to set up. As the uh, property suggests, you're gonna be able to track certain actors in your scene. If you want the camera to always follow something, you can just expand this, it's really easy, click this, checkbox here to enable look at tracking. Uh, there's a draw debug look at. Uh, you can check this if you'd like to see some debug information about where you're tracking. The interp speed, how fast you want to smooth in and out of tracking. And then the actor to track. You can click this drop down and select one from the list. Or you can use the eyedropper here and pick one from the scene. So let's try to do that. I'm gonna fly over here. And say we wanted to only focus on this car, I can select that, it'll focus on that. Now as the scene progresses, camera will follow and try to pivot towards uh, that actor. So it's really easy to set up uh, look at tracking. Go back to the beginning here. Uh, for this particular shot, we're not gonna need it, so I'm just gonna delete all this. Okay, uh, the film back settings is another one that we've kind of touched on in the past, uh, past streams. Uh, if you have a photography background or are familiar with different lens settings, you can come in here and see the different types of lenses you could use. Uh, you can try these out and see uh, the framing that you'd like. Uh, so let's do something like this. You can also set custom ones. If you go to custom and then you just enter in some values. Something like, something like that. Looks pretty good. Well, let me frame it up a little bit better. Uh, so let's see. There's also uh, the actual lens settings itself. Uh, you can take a look at these and kind of uh, experiment with those as well, but let's try to move on here. Focus settings, uh, you can go ahead and, similar to what we did with tracking, the look at tracking, you can change this from manual to tracking. Uh, expand this option here, actor to track, just like we did a moment ago with uh, look at tracking. You can also do it manually uh, with the manual focus distance here. Use this value, kind of adjust it to get the focus that you want. You can see in the preview now, it's coming into focus and not. So uh, you can also use the eyedropper here as well. You can click this and just pick on something and say focus on that. Pretty easy stuff. Uh, focal length, uh, aperture, and focal distance. Uh, we're going to have some documentation explaining these a little bit more. 
Uh, but you can play with these settings uh, if you'd like to get a different effect. So now that we have our camera settings, let's frame this up a little bit better uh, before we do anything else and do a quick, uh, quick shot here. Added this buggy because I was doing uh, actor tracking. I don't need that. I'm going to delete that actually. Let's take this crane, just move it back just a little bit more like this. And there we go. So we have the position of our camera. Uh, we have everything set up, our starting shot. And probably what we'll do is kind of just pan up like this and watch the cars kind of take off. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be something really easy to do. So for the transform, we come down here. We could click this checkbox or this plus mark to add a, a transform for the current position of the camera. And that added one for location, uh, rotation, and scale. We can delete all that. Other way we could do that is if we select the camera here in the level, so we have the camera selected in the level, we could hit S on our keyboard. That will add location, and rotation, and scale uh, transform keys. We can delete that again. Uh, we can also add them independently. So if I select our camera, I can hold Shift and hit W for location, Shift and E for rotation, Shift and R for scale, or like I said, S just to add all three. 99% of the time, you should be able to use uh, just the S key and then come in and pull out the ones that you don't want to actually add a keyframe for. So I think the current position is fine. Uh, let's go ahead and add the current position of our camera crane. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add a track for that. We're going to add the pitch. We're also going to add the arm length. So we'll add a key for that, which it already did. And let's go ahead and scrub ahead a little bit. Our cars kind of take off somewhere around somewhere around here. Uh, we'll take our crane and we'll pitch it up. Drag this up. You can enter it in manually too. I'll say something like 45. That's good. Let's add a keyframe for that. Click in that option there so it adds a keyframe. Uh, crane arm link, we're going to push that out quite a bit actually so it kind of passes over the sign. Something like that. Let's add a keyframe for that. And we can also do the yaw. Let's kind of just center it up a little bit. Say two. Something like that. I'm going to add a keyframe for that as well. Uh, I didn't initialize that, so I'm going to have to initialize that as well. But you can kind of see where we're going with this. Something like that. And let's see the camera yaw. Let's zero that out to start. Add a keyframe for that. So here's our shot, kind of just pushes up, goes past the start sign. And we could tilt the camera as well. Let's do that real quick. Let's do that inside the viewport here. Could have used the look at tracking, but we can only track one actor. So I figured we'd do it like this instead. And hit E and just rotate that down a little bit. Probably want to push the arm out a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to hit Shift and E for rotation. And let's take our arm length and push it out just a little bit more. Something like that. Keyframe for that. Now it'll kind of look like that. Could probably move our keyframes down. A uh, quick tool here, we can do the select tool. And we can take all of these keyframes and let's move them all the way over to say 150. No? Now it kind of takes a little bit longer kind of popping there. I think I have two keyframes, which I do. Delete that. that over. There we go. I'm totally just winging this, but that's that's our shot there. So that was our first shot. So that's a quick example using the crane and then this cinematic camera actually. Take another look at some of the other options we have. We have the rail now, so the cinematic uh, camera rail. Uh, and for this, what we could do is let's kind of follow our cars as they cross cross the bridge here. So let's let's add that. So we'll say somewhere around here we'll cut, and we'll cut to a different camera. I'm gonna take this and hit Control uh, Period. So cut. And I'm going to move this over because I noticed one thing as I was testing this. Let's stretch this out. Oh, 
you know what? I want to leave that there. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and add our camera rig. And I'm going to hold Control and drag that in, just like we did before. So we'll add it to Sequencer. I'm going to hold Control and drag this in. And it will assign, this is what I was afraid was going to happen. It will assign the camera, uh, the camera cut. Uh, it doesn't assign it from the marker location, which is something that, uh, I'll talk to the Sequencer guys, actually, and see if this is a bug or if this is something that we can actually add. But it, it assigns it uh, over the track. It doesn't assign it from the current marker location. So I'll need to move this over and then uh, come in here, go back to the beginning, and add camera 8. It'll go camera 8, and then it'll cut to camera 9. Yeah, there's our second camera. So uh, for the second camera, let's make some quick changes to this. Camera 9. First thing that we're going to do is set up our rail here. So there's our rail. When we add the rail, it's going to add two keyframes. It's going to add one for the start and one for the end position of our rail. So it's going to do it based on the length of your sequence. So as you can see, it goes from zero to one, one being all the way at the end and zero being at the start. Now we can add additional keyframes in here. Uh, let's go ahead and do this real quick. So I'm going to set this up. Oops, not the camera. Don't want to rotate that. The camera itself. Move the rig. Probably not where we want our rig. Good snapping. <clears throat> there we go. Well, now it's kind of aligned with our street there. W, move this up just a little bit. Move our scene over. There we go. So the camera settings need to be changed so that we are, are using the same ones as our first shot. So let's do that. Camera 9. Come down here and change the film back. We did a custom one. There we go. So 20 by 10 is what we used. And let's take the rail again. Push this back just a little bit. Up. Back. Normally I would do this on two windows to make it <laughs> or two monitors to make this a lot easier, but you get the idea. So uh, let's take our camera and pitch that down just a little bit too. Pitch our camera, and I'm just going to even rotate that down. I don't want that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and let's move this up just a little bit. Uh, let's add the transform for this. Let me just hit S for now. Over to the beginning. Ah, I don't know what it did. Yeah. Delete that real quick. Ah, where'd my rail go? Whoops. So whenever you add something to the level and then add it to sequencer, it's going to initialize the uh, location, the transform. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind if you go in and make changes to that camera. Uh, before initializing, before setting a keyframe at its default position. It's going to revert back to that, which is what just happened to me. I do it all the time. Uh, hopefully you guys do it less than I do, but I do it all the time. Let's take this, move this back up, and let's actually make sure that we're at the start of our shot. Scroll down and get this too. We don't need that. Okay. Oh, it said move it again. Keep moving it. Oh, why did it do that? Uh, where are you, camera? Totally 
some brain dumping right here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna delete this and make it easier. Do it over. Control and drag that in again. Up. Turn around. That. Adds the transform for us automatically. There we go. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and did it not add the camera now? Because I didn't control drag it in. Ah. So this is the other way of doing this. Uh, let's take the camera, add some rail. This out. This example turned out to be longer than I thought, and it did it much better when I was practicing it. Uh, let's go ahead and change film back settings for this. Custom. So. And let's add the position for this. I don't use it. Also need to set it to use that camera now. Close that, and we'll say use camera eleven. Is it? There we go. All right. Okay. So we can take these points here on our camera rig, and we can stretch these out. Or we can hold Alt and drag another one, uh, like so. Uh, you can also rotate these. You can grab these tangents and kind of curve it uh, if you'd like as well. Uh, we'll just leave it straight for now. And let's take our last tangent and just move it all the way down. I'm just going to move it all the way down to the end of the bridge here. <laughs> of course, I curved it. Something like that. Something like that. And let's see. Take a look at our sequence. And we need to add the positions for those. Let's add. Uh, that's the ring. Position on rail, so start at zero and out. I can add one at the end. And I could come in and fine tune this uh, a little bit if I wanted to. I could pitch the camera again, which I should do. And adjust the speed at which it moves. You can actually move it back off the rail too if you wanted to. Do it like that. It's still going to be attached to the rail. Okay. Keep going into local space. So something like this. And then we could say, let's make sure that we add transform for that. Of course, it's going the opposite way now. <laughs> that. It's going the opposite way because I added the wrong keyframe, I think. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why it's going the opposite way now.
we get the idea. Uh, I'll do a better how-to for this. <laughs> uh, I kind of just messed this one all up, but uh, we'll do a better how-to for this to illustrate how it is. But essentially, you can add points to the rail uh, and then manipulate them uh, like so. Oh, that's why I have another keyframe back there. That's why. Uh, and then you can, like, if you wanted to curve it around this edge here, you could uh, adjust the tangents to make it come around. You could use look at tracking to make it follow uh, the, char the character or your pawn, uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, let's see. So that's the rail. Uh, we talked about the crane. We talked about cinematic camera actors uh, and some of the properties that you can set uh, for those, such as the lens settings and film back settings. Uh, I did want to talk about some of the new workflow improvements. Uh, as these are the actors that were added, but there's been a lot of workflow improvements. Some of the things that we've kind of been talking about, some of the keyboard shortcuts for adding uh, things to sequencer in spawnable form versus uh, to the level. Uh, there's actually a page for this. Let me bring this up. So this is uh, some of the documentation that we've been updating. Uh, added a section for working with sequencers. This isn't live just yet, but it should be here towards the end of the week, hopefully. Uh, the sequencer cheat, cheat sheet. Uh, we'll highlight some of those keyboard commands that I talked about. There's a ton of them uh, that should help speed up uh, the process, process at which you edit your content and add things to sequencer, uh, et cetera. I use a lot of these all the time, uh, specifically the editing tools uh, and key interpolations, et cetera. So hopefully this will be uh, live here at the end of the week. Uh, we also added uh, a section for the level sequencer uh, editor preferences. There's a new editor preference. Uh, tab that you can access from your project. So if you go to your project and you go to uh, editor preferences down here under content editors, there's the level sequence editor. Uh, we have documentation on this as well. Uh, it basically allows you to set up parameters for the editor, sequence editor, and how it functions. Uh, some things that you can toggle, such as showing frame numbers versus uh, actual time, uh, adjusting whether or not you see the slider, et cetera, things like that. Uh, you can now set inside of this. Uh, editor preferences uh, option inside of the content editor section. So go ahead and take a look at that. Um, again, documentation will be coming for that uh, very soon. Uh, I've got about 15 minutes left. Uh, there was another thing that I wanted to talk about. That's the uh, master track. So the new master track asset. Uh, the way that I've done things in the past, uh, you may have done something similar, is uh, you may have created a level sequence which you've called your master. And inside of that, you would have uh, like a shot track. And on that shot track, you would have all your individual shots, uh, et cetera, like so. And you may have audio in here and fading all on the master level. And then you can go into each individual shot and edit those. Uh, suppose you know how many shots that you want for your sequence. Maybe you storyboarded it out. And you know exactly how many shots you're going to need. Uh, you can now use what's called the master sequence asset. And you can do that from the cinematics button here. If you go up here, uh, add master sequence now. If you add that. It's going to give you a dialog window. Uh, some of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory here. You can name it. Uh, so we'll just call this sequence master is fine. You can choose where you want it to go. You can choose the number of shots. Uh, so say we wanted five shots. Uh, the sequence to duplicate is a really handy option here. Uh, suppose we had uh, created all of our animation and all of our content in one level sequence. Uh, we could assign that here, and then when we create our master sequence, each shot will use that uh, sequence to duplicate here. So then we can go in and chop it up as we need to uh, once our master sequence is created. I'm just going to clear this out for now just to show you what happens. Uh, so you can also set the default time, duration, uh, and shot information as well. So if I click Create here to create a master sequence, and it'll take just a second, uh, it will create uh, the master sequence for us. So it'll create the number of shots that we specified. If we go into each of these, it'll add a camera cuts track for us and a camera. So that all we got to do now is go in and just start creating our content. We have our camera set up. We know which camera is going to be assigned to which shot. Uh, it makes it nice and easy to have this template to start from. So you have everything laid out for you. You can just come in and populate. So, Really, really handy tool uh, if, if you prefer working that way, if you prefer getting all your ideas out on a storyboard and you know shot for shot what you're going to be doing. Uh, you may want to take this workflow, this, this approach. Uh, and we highlight this in the documentation as well. Uh, so we go to the workflow considerations here. So we have the linear workflow, nonlinear, 
collaborative. These currently exist on our documentation pages, but I added this section for the master sequence uh, workflow and how you could use this. I'm gonna close this out. That's the master sequence. Uh, real quick, uh, one other thing that I wanted to show, well, a couple other things that I wanted to show. Uh, converting a matinee to sequencer. Uh, so if you already have a matinee uh, set up and you have all of your content in there and you want to convert it to sequencer, it's really easy to do. Uh, what we could do, let's just try to create a simple matinee here. Uh, let's just say add, let's add a matinee. And it's been a long time since I've touched matinee. I can't even dock it there, can I? Uh, let's just move it over here for now. So I can add a new group, and we'll just call it new groups. Fine. Uh, let's just take, I don't know, something, another level. Might not work, but let's just try it anyway. Uh, so let's say keyframe there, and then you come in and move it over, move it up. Keyframe there. So in our preview. Yeah, so it moves up and down. So that's our matinee sequence. It's fantastic. Uh, what we could do is let's close this out. And we go to matinee here. So there's our matinee, the level. Uh, you, typically, you would go to open the matinee here. When you do this now, you're going to get a dialog window. It says that matinee is now a legacy tool. Uh, would you like to continue opening matinee or convert it to a level sequence asset? Now, you can open it up in matinee like normal and just work within matinee. It's perfectly fine. Or you can convert it to a level sequence. Just click this option here ask you where you want to save this new level sequence, which default is fine. It'll uh, give you some information of whether it was successful or not. You can show the output log for more information. Uh, but it's essentially created our matinee that we had uh, into a level sequence. We should be able to scrub now. And any camera or any animations, things like that, uh, would be converted over into a level sequence. Now, the matinee actor didn't actually get deleted. It's still there. And we could still open this up in matinee if we'd like. We could still have this. Uh, dialogue window, but um, it's, it's completely up to you. That's how easy it is to convert uh, an existing matinee into sequencer. Literally just a button press here. Let's close that out. Uh, how are we on time? We've got 10 more minutes. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show is the audio track. Uh, this is something that didn't quite make it into 4.11, uh, the ability to add an audio track. Uh, it's in 4.12 now. There is some things that, to consider with it. Uh, if I go ahead and click to add an audio track here, and I click this option, I can choose which audio track I want to assign. Uh, so I can go ahead and just pick one, for example. Like so. so this is my audio track. Uh, there's no editing functionality just yet. Uh, Sequencer is out of, an, un, out of the uh, experimental stages, uh, but it's still being developed, it's still being worked on, and things are still being added. Uh, improvements to the audio track is going to be one of them, obviously. Uh, there's no ability to fade in or fade out directly within Sequencer. Uh, I was going to show you a quick way to get around that. Uh, what you could do is go into uh, any asset, uh, uh, any audio asset. I'm going to convert this to a cue here, sound cue. And this gets a little bit into the audio editor here, but it's real, real quick. Uh, so inside the sound cue here, you could use an enveloper. And I do this on some of the projects that I use for now. Uh, until the audio track gets a little bit more uh, flexibility. So you can connect an enveloper here, and the enveloper essentially will allow you to fade in and fade out. Uh, you can define that here, as well as the pitch and other settings, but it's mostly the fade in and fade out, because that's traditionally what you're going to do with your music or whatever it is that's scoring your scene. Uh, so inside of the uh, curve window here, we have one key, which is just always play this at the value of one or full blast. Uh, what we could do is hold shift, add another key, and we could say after 20 seconds or however long we want uh, our audio to be, that's when we could start to fade out. So I'll say like 20, uh, let's make it shorter so you can hear it actually. Uh, we'll say after five seconds. 
uh, it's still going to be a value of 1. And then after 10 seconds, it should be 0. And you can visualize that here as well. Just by holding shift, adding keys in here, this is our audio cue. So it'll play, and then after 10 seconds, it should start to fade out. Uh, and then when you add this cue to sequencer, uh, it will take the properties here and apply those. So essentially, it gets you your fade out, uh, if that's what you're looking for. I just wanted to show that real quick, um, if you're looking for a way to fade, fade in or out uh, audio tracks. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and let's see. One last thing that we'll cover here before we get to your questions. Uh, the organizational tools that have been added. Uh, there's a couple of these that I wanted to highlight. Uh, folders is one of them. Uh, you can add a folder, and you can put things inside that folder. So if I had a camera, for example, uh, I could put this camera inside of this folder, and I could call this folder cameras, for example. And all my cameras can be in here, and I can expand and collapse this just to make things nice and neat. Uh, one of the other things you can do, I'm going to pull this out for a second and delete this. You can use uh, what's called labels. So say, for example, uh, we have this camera here, and say we had another camera. And this camera is uh, used with uh, the rig, and this one is used with the rail. Uh, we can add labels to these. So say we had a bunch of cameras on a bunch of different uh, rigs and a bunch of cameras on a bunch of different rails, and we wanted to filter between those. Uh, what you could do is right-click on one of these and say label. You can enter a comment here and say this is rig. And then we can go here and say this is the rail, like so. And then what we could do is go to the options here. Uh, we can enable the label browser. What that will do is now give us those labels, which we can click on and say, show me all the rigs, show me all the rails, uh, et cetera. So it's just another way of organizing your content inside of Sequencer. Uh, let's see, how are we doing on time? We've got about five more minutes. Let's try to get to some questions here. Uh, let's see, look off screen here for a second. Got signed out off screen, one second. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some of your questions. Uh, questions, does sequence record the HUD or can it be made to record the HUD? Uh, not that I'm aware of uh, yet. You could, if you have a, if you have a 3D widget, I suppose you could add that to Sequencer as an actor. Uh, that would be one way that you could record the HUD. Uh, if it's in 2D screen space, uh, I haven't tried that. I'm not quite sure if that's possible. It's one of the things I can bring back to the team and ask uh, if it can record uh, the HUD. Uh, can recordings be done outside of the editor and brought back in? Uh, import functionality, I guess. Uh, this is one of the things I think the team is looking into, import-export options, uh, not just with sequence recording, but uh, in general. Uh, this is one of the things that I think the team's looking into. In its current functionality, I don't believe it's possible, but it's something that could be explored down the road. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, is there a simple way to import can camera animation from Maya? Uh, let's see, I've done this in matinee, but I can't figure out how to do it with sequencer. Uh, yes, there's a way you can do that. Uh, I know in 4.13, uh, and I say this tentatively in 4.13, the team is hoping for 4.13 uh, FBX import options uh, so that you can just right click and import uh, directly within Sequencer. Uh, the way you would have to do it now is through the camera anim. So if you've done it in matinee, you should be very familiar. Uh, it's an asset, so you go to right click, miscellaneous, camera anim. And inside the camera anim, uh, this is matinee, so you can go in and import from here uh, your FBX asset. Uh, once you have that inside of Sequencer on any camera, uh, what you can do is then click the plus sign and add that camera animation. So it's right there. You just click Add Camera Animation. And Grace and Edge and I were on uh, a while back where we took some uh, shaky camera movement and applied that in this same manner. Uh, so you can take a look at that stream as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, is it possible to import Alembic files into UE4 for more complicated uh, simulations inside Sequencer? Uh, this is currently a roadmap feature, I believe. It's on the plate for the team to tackle. Um, but don't have an, an estimate in, term, in terms of timeline. Our team is saying potentially 4.14. 4 
uh, not necessarily 413 because there's other things that they need to get to, but uh, this is one of those things that's on the radar, uh, and it's actually on our Trello board as well if you follow that. Uh, can I use Sequencer to record 360 panoramic images directly? Um, this is something that one of the guys on our team, Sam Dider, has been working on actually. Uh, he's working on a doc page for uh, how to set this up. But within the editor, under plugins, there is, uh, if you search for, what is stereo? So stereo. Yeah, there's a st stereo panoramic movie capture. Once you enable this plugin, uh, that should allow you to uh, capture 360 movies. Now, there's a bit of setup involved in that. That's why I say that our team's working on full documentation for that. But I did have something. Uh, if you'd like to take a look, there was a blog post uh, from the guys uh, 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 Ninja Theory, uh, who did uh, Hellblade, they have a write-up here on how they did it uh, as well. You might want to take a look at this. Uh, here's the link up here. We can link this in the forums as well, too, uh, if you want to take a look at this post. But there's a, a, a bit of setup involved in getting it to work. Um, and hopefully uh, our team here can create something as well, a little bit, a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more step-by-step -step to get it up and running for you. But it's, it's on our, pl our plate to do. Uh, we'll get that out there as soon as we can. Uh, let's see, questions, let's see. Sequencer records gameplay and camera. Can I make a moving platform? Uh, I don't see why you couldn't. Uh, you could actually attach things to, I haven't tried this, but you could, like the vehicles that we have here, we could attach a camera to that and have it move with us. Uh, potentially, I haven't tried that. Theoretically, it should be possible. Um, I don't see why not. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, let me look at the form post here. A couple other questions too. Uh, there have been some requests for a step-by-step -step walkthrough as well, tutorial series on start to finish sequencer, uh, how to create uh, a short cinematic uh, experience from start to finish and the workflows uh, that you would take. It's on my plate of things to do. Uh, hopefully I can do that within the next couple weeks and get that out, uh, a series on sequencer. So uh, to those that are wondering about that, that's on our plate. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Can you export sound from Sequencer, or do you have to export a movie and rip it from there? Uh, currently, no. You can't export uh, audio independently of video. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the import-export options uh, that we hope to get in there in 4.13, maybe that will cover it. Uh, there was one other thing, actually, from Max. I uh, talked about, let me see if I can find that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let me see if I can find his notes on that. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, exporting audio uh, combined into AVI files uh, is probably not going to be until 4.14, actually, at the earliest. And 4.13, uh, they're planning to uh, include uh, and export uh, an EDL, edit decision list, which is basically a, sh a shot audio list that references AVI and audio files. Uh, it's a common exchange format that you can use to import into Premiere. Uh, this is a bit of overkill, but uh, you could probably use that to accomplish what you're after until uh, that comes online in 4.14. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. There was another question about virtual reality and uh, AVR mixed reality. Uh, it's something that's currently not possible. Uh, you can uh, record a player pond with motion controllers, uh, just as we did our vehicle buggy here. Uh, you can record that, export that, and then bring it into Premiere and then have, uh, let me drag this in so you can get an idea of what they're asking. Uh, so creating something like this is not currently doable in Sequencer, but exporting this side of it in gameplay, exporting that, and then combining it in Premiere or something with uh, a player, uh, real life footage is something that you could probably do. So uh, right on the nail, it's three o'clock. Uh, I think we're going to wrap here. Uh, that's going to do it for this stream. I believe next week, uh, Lauren and Richard will be back to talk about tanks versus zombies and some of the cool stuff that they're doing. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll try to answer any of the other questions that you guys may have in the form thread. Uh, as well as get the rest of that documentation ready uh, for publish hopefully this week. So uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.